SACD3, a startup based near Detroit, was founded to develop inexpensive, high-energy batteries for portable electronics and electric vehicles. Its batteries were selected as one of Technology Review's 10 Emerging Technologies of 2011. The company's founder and CEO, Anne-Marie Sastry, describes the company's technology. We started SACD3 with the idea of bringing solid-state battery technology into vehicles to enable more battery electric vehicles and also to change the way that consumer electronics are powered using fewer battery cells. And so, uh, you know, on a materials basis, on a, on a cost basis, a doubling of energy density, a tripling of energy density will absolutely make uh, energy storage technologies uh, competitive with fuel technologies and propulsion systems for the emerging economies. The trick is to figure out a way to process the materials at very large scale, at very low cost, but packing more energy into the same space. And solid state is a way to do that, and that's what SACI3 is working on. Right now, most battery technologies are made uh, by mixing of particles in a wet slurry and depositing them on a lamination line and then compressing them and packaging them. And what remains then in the battery cell are some solid elements, which are porous electrodes, and a liquid electrolyte, which interpenetrates the pores of the porous electrodes and allows access for the electrons and the ions to the active mass. A solid state battery, by contrast, doesn't have any liquid in it. And just like solid state processing has become common in all kinds of consumer goods, uh, solid state processing is, um, of course, an objective in the, in the battery industry as well. SACD3 was founded on the premise of making a solid state technology that was fundamentally lower cost and scalable. And in order to do that, we developed a set of computational tools and processing tools, uh, which we knew would allow us to both reduce design cycles by predicting the way the battery cells would behave, and also a set of processing techniques which could produce them fast enough and at low enough cost uh, so that those good designs could be realized. Uh, today's batteries have a fair amount of parasitic mass in them. That's not unusual with most technologies, but when I say parasitic mass, uh, I mean the mass that's included in the device that doesn't actually produce or store energy. Right? So we have carbons that are added into batteries to improve the conductivity so that the electrons can move from the electrode to the current collector. Uh, we have uh, ceramics that are used in concert with the separator to provide it with a higher strength and higher stiffness uh, to prevent dendrite formation but that don't actually uh, improve the diffusivity or the uh, energy density of the materials. Packages that are uh, designed to uh, make the battery cell very safe. Uh, cooling systems which are designed to keep the power pack at an optimal temperature, controls algorithms which require chips and microcomputers to control the battery pack in a very, within very tight bands of, of operating parameters. So there's a lot of mass that goes into these systems uh, that certainly mitigates risk in using a high energy technology, but also uh, reduces the overall energy density, the watt hours per kilogram. Solid state technologies um, that SACD3 is executing don't have uh, these parasitic masses. They don't have uh, porous electrodes. They don't have some of the things that I mentioned, and there are certain advantages uh, in systems level considerations as well uh, because the materials um, behave in a much more predictable way. A core part of the SACD3 approach is to use computational models to design battery cells. And it, were, it was those computational models that actually led us to execute the first prototypes and to start a company. It was based on the science of what we thought could be possible as uh, evidenced by computer simulations. And so uh, at this point in time, engineers are pretty good at predicting uh, stresses in complicated objects. and predicting increases in temperature, in uh, kinetic reactions, and also in predicting where ions go in an electrochemical reaction. Um, but combining those and then using optimization algorithms to make sure you've got not only a good material but the very best material you can have is challenging. And so we've had to, in the early part of development of the company, we did some invention in that area. And uh, we, we did develop some things that we don't think anybody else had developed, but it was toward our aim of making better battery cells. Billions of people will be deciding 
uh, in the next 10, 20 years, uh, what will propel their personal transportation? Uh, if present trends continue, they would select IC engine propulsion, uh, which has some well-known uh, consequences for climate, uh, for geopolitics, uh, for many other things, for livability of cities. Uh, it's very important that technologists put other solutions in front of people that are cost competitive and technology competitive uh, that may uh, reduce some of the ill consequences of continued dependence on combustion technologies with, with fuel infrastructures.